Hello everyone and welcome to yet another session of Zomio Classroom. I am Dr. Neha Khorke and we will be going through another case today which has been solved using HomePad Zomio. Let's start. This is a case of skin rash. Mr. N.C., who is 27 years of age, an unmarried engineer, complains of skin rash all over the body. The rash started from the head and there would be big scales which would fall. This began about nine years ago. The rash progressed from head to eyebrows and then to other parts of the body. The patient had been treated by allopathic medicine first for dandruff and subsequently for psoriasis without any good results. Now let us look at the characteristics of the rash. The eruptions are scaly with marked itching, aggravated by direct exposure to any kind of artificial light, sunlight, perspiration and heat. The patient could not bear light over his right eye. He had to turn his eye away even from sunlight. At night, he could not sit under strong light for his eyes closed automatically. With these few symptoms, we are now able to get a slight picture of the level of sensitivity in this patient. So out of the symptoms that we have taken, what do you think is the diagnosis? We come up with two kinds of diagnosis that this patient could possibly be suffering from. The first is a form of eczema and the second is psoriasis. How did we finally arrive at the diagnosis? Now understand, when we are talking about skin complaints, it largely depends on the clinical skills of the physician as well as the observational skills of the physician to know what exactly a person is suffering from. In this case also, we rely on observation and clinical skills. First, on observation, we saw that the rashes were in patches all over the body rather than a diffuse rash. The skin was thickened wherever the patches were. The scales were abundant and whitish in color. And very, very importantly, Ospid's sign was positive. Now, what is Ospid's sign? It is a test to diagnose psoriasis. Basically, you have to pull one or two of the scales from the skin wherever the rash is. And if you see bleeding spots underneath, this means that Ospid's sign is positive and points to a diagnosis of psoriasis. I will repeat it again. The physician needs to very gently, without causing any type of pain or discomfort to the patient, pull one or two of the scales of the rash. And if it reveals bleeding spots underneath, this means that Ospid's sign is positive and points to a diagnosis of psoriasis. So our final diagnosis of this patient is that he has psoriasis. Let's have a look at the life situation. In a condition especially like psoriasis, we know that psoriasis is a psychosomatic illness, which means that this disease first starts 
in the psyche or psyche or the mind of the patient and then externally manifests in the form of symptoms on the most sensitive portion of that person's body or constitution. In this case, it was the skin. That is why it is very important to get or acquire characteristics from the life as well as the personality of this patient that would lead to a skin rash like psoriasis. The patient was born and brought up in Bombay, today Mumbai. If hurt, keeps it in mind and always broods. So he is very, very sensitive to getting hurt. Gets angry easily on the smallest of matters. So reactivity in this patient is very, very high. Can you see the connection with our case where we see that because the mental reactivity and sensitivity of this patient is very high, it manifests on the skin as high reactivity and high sensitivity in the form of the scales and the patches of the psoriasis. As a student, would get extremely stressed before an examination. There is a lot of stress in his work and especially a stress before meeting any new person. He is an extremely sensitive person, emotional and has very strong views about things. Stress causes nervousness about small, small things. Gets excited very fast and shows anger when something goes wrong. Shouts very loudly and trembles with anger. Again, can you see how quickly and how fast his mental reactivity is expressing physically in the form of trembling? This is the level of sensitivity in this patient. Why I am constantly um, concentrating on the sensitivity is because this sensitivity plays a big role in the final remedy that was given to this patient. The patient holds a degree, a bachelor's degree in technology he is unmarried. In his childhood, he was very shy, sensitive and never mixed with people. He is extremely afraid of his father. The father is very dominating and short-tempered. This was the life situation. I hope friends that you have been taking down notes of the case history because we would like this to be an interactive session where you would take down what in your view and perception are the most important characteristics of this case, form your own totality and then we compare and finally arrive at the remedy. And that is how we learn. So I hope that you have taken down notes. Having a look at his past history, there was a history of acute paronychia a few years back, which was resolved with allopathic medicines. There is a family history as well. The father has cataract. However, the sister and mother are completely healthy. Let's have a look at his generals. He is a person of good appetite with marked thirst, especially for cold drinks. He has an intense craving for milk. He has almost four to five glasses of milk in a day. No complaints for bowels or any other elimination. His perspiration, however, is peculiar. 
it stains his shirts yellow. He bathes with hot water but while sleeping takes covering and switches on the air conditioner. This gives us a sort of an ambi-thermal picture. His sleep is good but there is salivation when he sleeps even today. And this is a symptom that has been going on since many, many years, since he was a young child and it was never treated because it was never considered as being not normal. However, we as homeopaths know how important even these seemingly little, little things are because they help us to point to the remedy very, very easily. The overall appearance of the patient. Why do we also see the appearance? Friends, it is not just the subjective symptoms that we consider. We also need to give importance to objective symptoms, to observations that the physician makes in the patient. And that is why it is necessary for the physician to be alert at all levels during the case taking. It's not just how he looks. It is his gestures, his body language, the way he is sitting, his posture, his eyes, the quality of his skin and hair, which makes up a total picture of a patient and gives you the final prescription. In this patient, the overall appearance of the patient is sickly with an oily face. Eruptions on his face are grayish with whitish scales. On his mustache, the scales are entangled with the hair. On observation, we saw that he kept wiping the mouth due to salivation, which meant that Salivation was in excess not only when he was sleeping but also during the entire day. Eruptions have the appearance of looking sticky. Now we'll have a look at the totality that we have taken. The totality of symptoms is a harmonious collaboration of all the characteristics whether on mental, physical, or an observational or subjective level that come together to form a comprehensive picture of the patient and hence the remedy. This is the totality that we have taken. First, anger on small matters. Why have we taken this? For a person who is 29 years of age, attains a certain level of maturity. However, this denotes a little bit of immaturity as well as sensitivity, which is why we have taken this symptom. It is a PQRS, peculiar, queer, rare and strange symptom. The second symptom that we have taken is an exteriorization of his anger. He trembles in anger. Again, an unusual characteristic for anyone who has anger as a symptom. Brooding. Based on the intensity of the symptom, we have taken this in the totality. Stress when meeting new people. Again, for a 29-year-old, a slightly unusual symptom. For his age, it is a PQRS. Then we have taken two physical generals which are extremely characteristic for him. Desire for cold water and desire for milk. Then we have taken the characteristic of his perspiration. Perspiration that stains his clothes yellow. The next we have taken is salivation during sleep. And the final symptom in the totality 
is the psoriatic rash. Why have we taken this? Is because we need to take into consideration this symptom because we need a remedy that will cover this symptom or the chief complaint as well. We cannot take a remedy that does not have psoriasis in its proving. And this is the reason why we have taken psoriasis also in the totality. Because the psoriasis has been with the patient for the past nine years, pervading his life. And that is why we need to take this symptom also along with the other characteristics. I am repeating the totality, anger about small matters, trembling with anger, brooding, stress when meeting new people, desire for cold water, desire for milk, perspiration that stains the clothes yellow, salivation during sleep, and psoriasis. Now, for all of you who have seen our previous sessions, you know what our next step is. Our next step is to convert each of these symptoms into a rubric, a workable rubric that we can look for and finally utilize as a tool to get the final prescription for this patient. Here is our conversion. Anger about small matters has been taken from the mind chapter of the complete repertory, Anger Trifles About. Trifles are tiny matters. Trembles in anger, taken from the mind chapter of the complete repertory under Anger Trembling With. Brooding, directly translated into the rubric brooding, again, from the complete repertory, chapter mind. Stress when meeting new people has been converted into the rubric. Yes, we have a rubric for this as well. Strangers in presence of aggravates. Desire for cold water. This is the symptom which we converted into a rubric and we have picked this up from the repertory of Kent because we found that the remedy list here is more concentrated and will give us better results. So, desire for cold water is converted as desires cold drinks from the stomach chapter of the Kent repertory. As an academic reference, I am just telling you that if you look for the same rubric in the complete repertory, you will not find it under the stomach chapter. You will find it under the chapter of generalities under food and drinks. Again, just an academic interjection we are, however, considering the rubric from Kent's repertory, chapter stomach. The next symptom is desire for milk. Again, converted into the rubric, desires milk from the stomach chapter of Kent's repertory. Perspiration staining the clothes yellow has been converted into a rubric seen in the perspiration chapter of Kent's repertory, staining the linen yellow. So we need to understand that this is your old usage of words because the repertory of Kent was released many, many years back and that is why the usage that you will see is quite old, quite vintage. The next rubric is 
salivation during sleep taken from the mouth chapter of kent's repertory salivation sleep during and the final rubric the psoriatic rash taken from the skin chapter of kent's repertory as eruptions psoriasis this is our complete rubric list and now without wasting any more time we will now start repertorizing this case using homepad zoomio we start now recording the rubrics of the totality using homepad zoomio this is the screen of homepad zoomio now in zoomio there are different ways in which we can record rubrics these different ways have been introduced and incorporated in the software because we know that different homeopathic users all over the world are comfortable with different ways of recording a rubric i will now be showing you four ways or rather five ways in which we can record rubrics from the totality that we have got let us start with the first rubric which is anger trifles about i will be showing you the easiest way in which you can record the rubric as well as view it at the same time in the repertorization sheet the name of that feature is quick repertorization to access quick repertorization we click on the repertorization sheet icon present here in the black task bar it is the first icon in the list when i click on it a blank sheet opens because i have not started recording rubrics as yet i will be recording the first two rubrics of the repertorial totality using quick repertorization so in this search bar i type anger space trifles and press enter when i press enter i see that a rubric has already been recorded now how quick was that it eliminated the step in between where i had to actually choose the rubric that i want now why is this very easy and very very useful is because the software intelligently records the most relevant rubric for the keywords that i have typed in now the software has recorded anger trifles about from the complete repertory chapter mind i will now show you another rubric recorded in the same way the other rubric that i would like to record is anger trembling with all i have to do is remove trifles and replace it with trembling i type trembling with and click enter and again within a fraction of a second the rubric anger trembling with has been recorded from the mind chapter of the complete repertory this was quick repertorization now let me show you the next way in which you can record rubrics this is by far the easiest way in which rubrics can be searched for and recorded in zoomio because this feature allows you to look for the keywords or symptoms that you have typed from all the 41 repertories 
that are there in HomePad Zoomio. And this feature is Repertory Search. To access the Repertory Search feature, click on Repertory in the top taskbar and select Repertory Search. As an alternative and a quicker way, all you need to do is from your keyboard, you press Command S. And this pop-up window opens. Now you can look for any keyword from any chapter of any repertory. Let's look for the next symptom in the list, which is brooding. I type brooding and click enter. Now I see 78 references for brooding. I will take the first reference which is from the complete repertory. All I need to do is check this box and the rubric has already been recorded. In case I'd like to see which are the remedies under that rubric. I click on the rubric and a pop-up window opens which shows me the entire list of remedies in this rubric. Let us see yet another rubric recorded using repertory search. Our next rubric in the list is strangers in presence of aggravates. Again, I press command S and I type the keywords. Now, it is not necessary for me to type the entire rubric. I will get the result even if I type one or two keywords. So I type strangers presence. Enter. And I now get 47 references for strangers in presence of aggravates. I now again select the first rubric in the list from the complete repertory. I check the box and it is done. So now we can see how simple it was to record rubrics from repertory search. Let me show you the next three rubrics using a different way of recording rubrics which is quick symptom record. The quick symptom record feature is very very useful for those homeopaths who have just started out in their practice or who have been practicing since a few years and for whom conversion of symptoms into rubrics is still not an easy task. In this case, the quick symptom record feature allows you to view the symptoms of the patient in his language and to select the rubric that is relevant for the patient immediately for your repertorization sheet. Let me show you. To access quick symptom record, click on repertory and click quick symptom record. You can also access this feature by pressing Command K from your keyboard. Now what you see on the left hand side is a list of chapters. Under every chapter there are symptoms that are present in patient's language. Against every symptom there are certain rubrics that we have linked and all you have to do is select that rubric which is relevant for your patient. As an example, 
my patient has a desire for cold drinks. So all I need to do, I don't even have to enter into the chapter. I just have to type the symptom here in the search bar. So let me just type cold drinks and now the list automatically jumps out and shows me all the references for cold drinks. So I have aggravation from cold drinks, amelioration, aversion, desire. What I am looking for is desire for cold drinks. I select that and on the right hand side, I see all the references for desire cold drinks. Now, I want to select this rubric from another repertory instead of the complete repertory. So now, I will record this rubric from Kent. So, the rubric is Kent stomach desires cold drinks. I check the rubric and it is recorded. Let me show you another symptom. We have a desire for milk in the patient. So again in the search bar I will type milk and these are the references that I get. What I am specifically looking for is desire milk. I click on desire milk and these are the rubric references I get. Again, I'd like to record this rubric from Ken's repertory. I check the rubric and it is recorded. There is still one more rubric that I'd like to show you using the quick symptom record, which is perspiration staining yellow. How do I look for it? Simple. Type the keywords again. So I look for perspiration yellow. And I have now directly jumped to that reference. Perspiration, character, staining, yellow. And I again select the rubric from Kent's repertory. So I select the second rubric in the list. How simple was it to use the quick symptom record to get rubrics for my patient? I will now be showing you the final way, the classic way in which rubrics can be recorded. This is the way that you would record in as if you are going through a book. So you need to be sure where the rubric is present exactly in the repertory and then you can use this way to record your rubrics very easily. This is the classic way. We will be recording two rubrics, salivation during sleep and psoriasis using the classic way. Now, what I need to do to access the repertory is click on repertory and select repertory list. I can also press Command O from the keyboard. So this is the screen that opens when I click on open repertory. Okay. Now the last two rubrics also I'd like to record from the Kent repertory. And so I go to the Kent repertory from my list. My rubric is salivation, sleep, during. Now this rubric is present in the mouth chapter 
of Kent's repertory. So I select mouth and now if I want to look for the rubric, I just need to start typing. I don't have to click on any button. So I type salivation, it jumps to the main rubric, space, sleep. Now it shows me two references, salivation, sleep during, salivation, morning, sleep during. Now what is relevant for my patient is salivation, sleep during. I directly record it from here. That's it. And now I need to record the final rubric. The final rubric is psoriasis, which I again want to record from Kent's repertory. Now this rubric will be found in the skin chapter of Kent's repertory. I click on skin and again I start typing. You need to know exactly where the rubric is present. In Kent's skin chapter, it is present under eruptions. So I type eruptions space psoriasis. And now I see the reference for eruption psoriasis. If I want to see the remedies under this, I click on eruption psoriasis and it directly jumps to that rubric. Now I just check the box and the rubric is recorded. So now I have completed with recording all my rubrics and now I wish to see my repertorization sheet. I click on the icon for the repertorization sheet and here it is. Now, if you can see, there are 362 remedies that have featured in this list based on the rubrics that we have recorded. But among the 362 remedies, which is the remedy that I need to give to my patient? How do I refine this? How do I make it more targeted? I do this by using repertorization filters. If you remember, apart from the rubrics that we have recorded, there were some other aspects of the patient also that we had to consider. The first was that there was a very high level of sensitivity and reactivity in the patient. The second was his thirst. And the third was the chronic nature of the complaints. How do we figure this here? Because apart from the rubrics that we have recorded, these three aspects are also equally important. So how do we consider them? We have a filter in HomePath which will help you to add these features as well and to refine your list of the final remedies for the patient. And that is the remedy property filter. You can access the remedy property filter here from this toolbar of filters. I click on it and a pop-up window opens where I am able to see certain options. I just select the options that are relevant to my patient. So I select chronic stage, thirsty patient and a patient who has high sensitivity. I would like to see those remedies only that cover all these three aspects along with the symptoms of my patient. So I now apply this filter 
and my list refines to 110 remedies with sepia featuring first, murk, rustox and arsenic follow. Now again, among these 110 remedies, which is the remedy for my patient? If you see, then gradation wise or marks wise, sepia features first. But if you see symptom covered wise, I just click on symptoms covered. The list now rearranges. Sepia is now third in the list and Merxol is the first. Again, how do I confirm the remedy for my patient? Now, if you saw the general trend of our repertorial totality, it was a Kentian approach and that is why I feel that we need to apply the next filter where we give more importance to the rubrics that we have taken from Kent's repertory because we have applied the Kentian approach in this case of mentals, physical generals and then the particulars. So what we do now is we take all the rubrics of Kent and we separate them in another clipboard where we can see only those remedies from Kent's repertory. How do we separate the symptoms? We do this by using clipboard repertorization. If you see here on the black task bar, you see a lot of empty clipboards. We will take the symptoms or the rubrics from Kent and place them in one of the clipboards and view those rubrics separately. So to do that, I right click on the rubric and select add to clipboard 1. So this symptom is now added to clipboard 1 separately. In a similar fashion, I do the same thing for the next four rubrics in the list. Desire for milk, perspiration staining yellow, salivation during sleep and the last eruption psoriasis. I have added all of these five rubrics from the Kent's repertory to a different clipboard. Now let me see what I see in that clipboard. I have added all of them to clipboard 1. I click on clipboard 1. Now in clipboard 1, what I see are only those rubrics that I have recorded from Kent's repertory and I see that there are 141 remedies with Merck being the only remedy that covers all the five rubrics. Now, if you think back on the case, Merck is a remedy that has very quick and high reactivity, a low threshold and very high sensitivity. And this is exactly what is seen in our patients. So I am now sure that Merck is my remedy. But I still want to confirm it. How do I confirm it? With a reference book. So to confirm it, I right click on Merck. And let me have a look at all the reference books that have something featured on Merck. Among all these books that have references for Merck, let me look for Merck in The Soul of Remedies by Rajan Shankaran. Now, if you read Mercurius from this book, the first symptom that jumps out is 
this. The main feeling in Mercurius is that of being dominated, suppressed or contradicted by an extremely dictatorial authority. If you remember, this patient has a very dominating father and he is still suppressed by him. So we are in the right direction. In the same paragraph, look at this. Like a Staphysagria person, he has trembling when angry or enraged. So if you can see, even anger trembling with which we had taken from the complete repertory had murk in it. Let us look at something else as well. Let us look at the physical symptoms. We scroll down. Look here. Perspiration which stains fast, leaving either yellow stains or a saltish deposit which stiffens the linen. And just the next line, profuse salivation during sleep. My remedy is now confirmed. So I am now sure that it is Merxol that I need to give to my patient. Remember that we are dealing with a case of psoriasis. And in psoriasis, it is not just the remedy that you give. It is also the auxiliary management that you do, which is equally important, especially with relation to diet. Because we know that there are certain foods, especially those containing artificial flavors, artificial colors, gluten, which can flare up psoriasis. Whereas on the other hand, fresh fruits and vegetables, drinking plenty of water can help to relieve the symptoms of psoriasis. It is important for us to provide these tips to the patient as well along with the medicine. Because if there is a maintaining cause in food, then even our medicines, however correct, may not work. So how do we know what are the diet instructions that we can give to our patient of psoriasis? Well, we have a section for diet and nutrition in Hopepath Zomio from where we can give diet tips as well. What you need to do is go into the utility module of Zomio. Click on Utility and click on the second option, Diet and Nutrition. There are 72 clinical conditions for whom specific diet and nutrition tips have been given. Let me type and see if I have something for psoriasis. Yes, I do. So now on the right hand side of the screen, I have a brief insight into the disease and I also have an entire dietary management that I can give to my patient. This can be printed as well and given to your patient for safekeeping. Merck Sol 30, 14 powders were given. One powder to be taken twice a day for a week. Let us see what happened in the follow-up. When he came after a week, the itching was marginally better. However, patches were unchanged in size. Stress was still present and salivation during sleep was status quo. The prescription was repeated for the next 15 days. He came in his next follow-up stating that itching was better by 20%. Scaling seemed better marginally. Patches still looked the same. However, 
there was a slight improvement in the salivation. Prescription was again repeated for another 15 days. Remember, when we start with a slightly lower potency, we have the freedom of repeating the medicine for the patient. In higher potency, repetitions are not advised on a frequent scale. So we need to be very, very careful because it can lead to an aggravation in the patient. In the next follow-up, he showed even better improvement. Itching was better by 50%. Scaling was better. The redness of the patches were going down. Patches on the face, however, had aggravated. But the salivation was better. We again continued the medicine for another 15 days. In his next follow-up, he was much, much better and much, much happier. If you can see, both itching as well as the scaling had reduced. The patch on the scalp had begun to reduce. The salivation during sleep was much, much better. And at this point, we felt that he was on his way to recovery, which is why it was not necessary now to repeat the remedy. He was kept on placebo only. In his next follow-up, however, he mentioned that he encountered a stressful situation at work because of which the itching had increased. We now gave Merxol in the 200 potency. However, we did not repeat it frequently. Two powders were given, one per week. Now, why did we increase the potency? That's because we saw that with the 30th potency, although the patient was very much better, a stressful situation at work flared him up. Now, with the right potency, this should not be happening. He should be able to cope with the stress and he should continue to get better at all levels, not just at the physical level, which is why we decided to increase the potency. In the next follow-up, his itching was much better. The scalp patch was steadily reducing. However, the patches on the face and the body were still the same. Salivation during sleep, better. We repeated Moxol again, one powder per week in the 200th potency. And in the next follow-up, he said something that we were so happy to hear. I feel much calmer than before. This means that the medicine had touched the core of this patient, which is why he was mentally as well as physically getting better. At this point, he said that the salivation during sleep had completely stopped. And in the next follow-up, the scalp patch had completely resolved. The facial patches had also resolved the patches on the body was steadily reducing. He was put only on placebo. In one year and four months of treatment, he is only on placebo with only few doses of Merxol given so far. So what do we learn from this case? The efficacy and duration of action of a medicine also depends on the sensitivity of the patient. Higher the sensitivity, longer the duration of action. Never repeat the medicine till the previous dose is working. When you are unsure, give placebo. It gives time for you to think and time for the patient's body to react to the previous medicine or dose. 
a clearly increased sensitivity is expressed in this case the first was cannot bear the slightest light and the second if hurt keeps it in his mind and third stress causes nervousness about small things although the mental symptoms are clearly expressed the pathology has advanced along with the high sensitivity this is why we start with the 30th potency because if we would have started with a higher one we could have got a marked aggravation of the symptoms so that was our case for this session i hope that you take away a lot of learning from this session and i will see you next week with yet another case presentation an interesting case with zomio this is zomio classroom and this is dr neha saying goodbye and take care.